You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Hello, everybody. It's Kelly and Troy again from Red Tool House. Um, we wanted to do something a little different with this video. It's kind of a, an intro video into a series we want to get into, talking about chickens. Um, most homesteaders um, have chickens. They kind of start, that was kind of our start, wasn't it? Um, then it was an easy place to get started. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you kill a chicken, it costs you a couple bucks. So if you, if you don't know how to take care of it, it's not like you've invested a ton of money in a pig or a horse or a goat or whatever. So, so yeah, so we want to do a series about chickens and we're going to cover a lot of things, uh, talk about the different types of chickens, obviously your egg layers, your meat chickens, your um, different types of heavy breed, light breed, your egg colors, all that type of stuff. And also talk about the different types of housing uh, you have for your chickens, how to care for them, how to feed them, uh, and, and of course predator concerns, all those type of things. So we want to talk about that, cover a wide range of topics. And what we'd really like you to do, encourage you to do this, as we go along each week, like I said, this may this will be a multi-week series, we'd really like to encourage you to leave comments below and ask questions or make suggestions as to what uh, we should cover. So if you, again, if you see something or you say, hey Troy, you really didn't spend a lot of time on that, then make a comment and we'll make sure we address that in our next week's video. We want this to be as, as interactive as possible. So uh, uh, stay tuned for that. We'll, we'll dive right into that uh, here shortly. Okay, well, the, the first topic, of course, is where to get started. How do you get started with chickens? Um, well, obviously, you want to kind of choose two big categories, I guess, would be the logical part, right, Kel? Do you want chickens for eggs? Do you want chickens for meat? Or do you want both? Are you going to have egg-laying chickens you're going to eat at some point? That's obviously a whole other discussion. So um, how did we, do you remember how we went about that, how we were choosing what we wanted to do? Well, I mean, I think the easiest is to start with the egg layers because you don't have to deal with processing them for a while. It's not going to be something that you raise very quickly and then have to process in a couple of months. Um, and um, so that's how we started. Yeah, I guess we, we kind of wanted to start small and we chose, um, we actually chose a, a dual purpose breed uh, that was, or a heavy, heavy frame, heavy body bird, heavy breed. There's all kinds of different ways to describe it. It's kind of light, heavy when it comes to egg layers. And we chose the Rhode Island Red is what we started with because we'd heard good things about them. Thought, well, that's a good one. It's a good egg layer. Um, you can eat them if you want. Now, again, as you, as you get into this, you'll discover that if you're really going to raise a dual purpose bird for eating, you're not going to take a Rhode Island Red who's, who's produced a lot of eggs for you over the years, and you're like, okay, now it's time to eat, eat the old girl, and, and she's going to be super tasty. You know, there's a, there's a reason why there's a phrase, the tough old bird, because uh, a, a bird like that, after you've gotten a couple years out of laying, is, is not going to be a fryer. Now, obviously, you can crock pot and do some other things with them, but um, so that's kind of the thing to figure out. Again, most people usually start with the egg layers because um, it just it's kind of an easy entry entry there. So, can you list the breeds that we've had? Yes, we've had um, Rhode Island Red, we've had um, Black Australorp, we've had Golden Comet, uh, Bard Rock, Americana. Did I forget any? Mm -hmm. um, Buff Orpington. And we had one strange one. We had a silky. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. He didn't make it very long. Odd top man. Hat. Top, yeah, top we called him Top Hat. Yeah. Yeah. Odd, odd man out in that situation. He cacketh <laughs> pretty quickly. Um, so that was what seven, if you include uh, Top Hat there. So we've had uh, those seven different uh, different breeds, and those are all fall in the category of a heavy frame or a heavy bodied bird. Uh, where we live in West Virginia, Zone Six A, uh, have. Some very cold winters at times, sometimes they're not, but uh, the heavy, heavy body birds seem to handle winter, winter better. Uh, they can handle a, a non-heated coop, those type of things. And um, of course, we also like the brown eggs. We thought if we're gonna have egg layers, we wanted brown eggs versus white eggs. All right, so um, out of those seven breeds that we've had, what was your favorite? and why. <laughs> My favorite's the Americana because I love the blue <laughs> eggs. They're so pretty. <laughs> So that's the only reason why you like that chicken is because it lays a blue egg. Yes. I curse the day we got that chicken. They're, the, they're much better now. <laughs> oh, now? <laughs> Bunch of freeloaders. Yeah, so the situation with the Americanas will get you guys in on this conversation, obviously. That's the whole point we're standing here. Um, the Americanas, uh, we got just recently, what, just last year? Yes. Yeah, we got those because we wanted a little variety. People like the blue eggs. We thought it'd be kind of cool. And they're actually a lighter 
lighter framed bird. They're, they're, uh, uh, they, they like to fly. They can fly over our concentration camp wire pretty easily. Uh, I haven't clipped their wings yet, but it hadn't, hadn't been an issue. We'll get into that further. But, um, but probably the biggest thing that really aggravated me was the how long it took for them to mature to an egg layer. Uh, yeah, we'd get our standard heavy body chickens, heavy body frame would be 20 weeks to 24 weeks, maybe 25 weeks at most. And what were they with the... They, they were starting at seven months if we were Yeah, I was lucky. thinking, yeah, I was thinking up to 30 weeks, <clears throat> excuse me, 32 weeks, something like that. Some center thinking, here, I'm feeding these chickens a bunch of freeloaders and, and um, they just aren't laying. So that was, that's something to consider when you, you get a chicken and you, you want to have eggs, you know, they're not going to... You're not going to get a little baby chick and realize, oh wow, in four weeks it's going to have feathers. It's it's a it looks like a full size chicken. I should be getting eggs soon. Uh, no, you're gonna you're gonna have to keep that chicken, you know, five six months before it's going to start producing. And we first got into this, that's about the time that a predator would kill one of the chickens. It's like, oh, that chicken's getting ready to lay an egg, then bam, something would nail it, whether it be a hawk or whether it be a raccoon or whatever. <clears throat> Well, at the time they were free range. Yeah, that's when we were doing free range, and, and we'll we'll talk we about that too when we get into housing discussions. How that really didn't work out for us, and and what we've done. Again, you guys can see in the background here, kind of our setup, and we'll detail that as to what we've got going on. And there's there's some holes in that 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 we're going to address this year and and correct. But uh, but getting back to breed, so you like the Americana. <clears throat> I like them all, but it, yeah. I really enjoy getting the blue eggs. It is it is interesting when you you pick a breed and it just kind of you, you kind of find some of the nuances about it. But again, with those those seven breeds, and I'll say really six because the silky we didn't really give him a fair shake, and that's that's not a, a production chicken. You're not going to have a silky for eggs or anything like that. That's kind of a well. He was the extra from yeah yeah he was the, the the hatchery we order from. Uh, you know, you can check a box if you want to get one exotic, and we've done that in the past. We've kind of stopped doing that because that's just kind of mean. If you're just going to have one exotic, then you're just kind of it's going to get picked on. Yeah, picked absolutely, on. <laughs> picked and pecked. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so your favorite was the Americana. My favorite has always been the Black Australorp, and I think I'm still going to stick with that. Uh, close second would probably be the Golden Comet. Did we mentioned Golden Comet. Yes, we okay, mentioned we Golden Comet, and yeah. I like the Barred Rock. They Jailbird. They always look really nice. I mean, the others kind of get scraggly. That's a good looking and... <laughs> bird you got there. And the barred rock seems to look nice all the time. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that. Barred rock, you know, with pinstripes. Everybody looks good in pinstripes, though, so you can't, <laughs> you can't go wrong with that. But yeah, barred rock usually seems to be cleaner. The Australorp is kind of the kind of the backyard chicken and he? he is a little dirty and and uh, maybe doesn't doesn't preen himself as well but the reason why i like the australorp and i've talked about this in my blog um i, I never would have guessed this was the case until somebody told me and then i saw it in my, in my own eyes so rewind about five years we have rhode island reds up here on the house site and the house site is kind of an exposed knoll uh, we're down in the valley right now the house would be up here um, so these, these Rhode Island Reds are just free ranging around the yard and, and every once in a while I'd go out and be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wait a minute, I'm, I'm missing some. So I go walking around and there'd be these little puff, little puffs of feathers here, little, little pile, little, and what was happening is these, these, these chickens were out on these points and these hawks were just flying over. Man, they were nailing these Rhode Island Reds. They'd just come down and you could actually see where they'd, they'd hit them here and kind of fly out over the valley and you just see this little scatter of feathers and just, just banging them one after the other. And I thought, man, how do you how do you keep hawks from eating your your chickens? So we looked, you know, when it came to free ranging, it's like, oh, you need to cut down any trees that have any exposed limbs that a hawk can roost in. It's like, okay, we only have about five million trees around here. That's not going to happen. So I was really getting frustrated. Well, a buddy of mine um, that I, that I'd met, I actually met him online, but he had a farm just uh, just about ten minutes away. He raised these black australorps. He says, oh, you got to do australorps because the hawks mistake them for crows and won't mess with them. And I'm like, that's a bunch of bull. There's no way. There's no, yeah, hawk's not that stupid. But um, you come to think about it, it's like, okay, a hawk's up here looking down. Is that a crow? You know, crow uh, absolutely picks on hawks constantly. A hawk hates a crow and vice versa. So, okay, we'll give it a shot. So how many we got? We got quite a few from Adam that time, didn't we? I don't recall. Two yeah. different? Yeah, I think we... More. We started incubating, we, and we'll, we'll address that one as well. We, we have an incubator. We started incubating um, eggs that we got from this guy, fertilized eggs, and started hatching out these Australorps. Man, we were just cranking them out left and right, and we were still learning at the time, so unfortunately there's, there's times that look like Jonestown Massacre around here where chickens had gotten wiped out because they didn't have housing right and a storm, all that type of stuff, predators. <clears throat> but I noticed there, the hawk attacks 
just totally went away. We never got another uh, loss to hawks. And I've seen hawks fly over. I've seen them kind of circle around and double check. Now, obviously, we don't have Australorps in here, our, our exclusive to Australorps. We've got all of our, our different breeds there. But what's really cool is, um, is because the Australorps are mingling with that, they think, hey, there's a bunch of birds on there that look kind of tasty, but those crows are really going to mess with us. And again, that sounds like total voodoo to me, but I, I can only speak from experience. And, and like I said, we haven't lost a single chicken to a hawk ever since then. So, so that's why I like the Australorp, and that would be my uh, top of the pick there. And they're good egg layers. In fact, I believe, <clears throat> if I know my uh, facts right, I believe they still hold the world record as the most prolific egg laying chicken. Oh. And uh, you can you can Google that, but yeah, the Australorp, I believe, um, however they do that testing, 320 eggs out of 365 days, something like that per bird. So, so that's good. So if you like a lot of eggs, you know, big brown eggs, that's that's a good bird to have. And of course, it keeps keeps the hawk predation down. Well, while we're on the subject of breeds, we're kind of talking about the egg layer breeds. Let's talk about uh, meat layers. <laughs> Not meat layers, meat chickens. Ever seen a meat laying chicken? <laughs> that would be an interesting crossbreed, wouldn't it? All right, so uh, meat chickens or uh, broilers, I guess, would be the proper term. Uh, what are the breeds there? Well, when it comes to commercial breed, when you think of you know Kentucky Fried Chicken, chicken, what are you getting there? You're getting a Cornish cross, which um, again, there's a lot of misinformation out there about the Cornish cross that all oh, they're genetically modified, they're this that, they're your Franken chicken. They are a big bird. They grow very fast, and it's it's kind of crazy how unchicken like they are. They're not really uh, they're not really um, a type of chicken that's going to go around and forage. In fact, they kind of just take a couple steps and sit down, take a couple steps and sit down, and, and kind of lay at the food, feed bowl. It's kind of like me on Thanksgiving, just kind of lay around, just kind of shoving stuff in. So uh, so it's it's kind of interesting. The um, they are not genetically modified. They are not some sort of uh, you know, gross science lab experiment. It is um, just selective breeding where they, they cross two breeds of chickens to come up with this Cornish cross. That's why you can't breed a Cornish cross and still get a Cornish cross. It's you know, be considered a hybrid. But through selective breeding, they're getting uh, this type of chicken that's just a really big producer. It just grows. It puts on weight fast. And um, so you can think, okay, well, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken Chicken, it's, it's the same, same species, same breed of bird that we would have here in our chicken tractor, which I'm pointing to, you guys can't see because it's over there. Um, it's the same breed of chicken. So KFC has their farmers growing theirs and we have ours. So what's the difference? Well, it's obviously, it's their feed, it's their inputs, it's how they're being raised. That's what makes the difference. So you know, uh, are our chickens better? Well, we, well, we think so. Um, are KFC's lousy? Eh, again, we don't necessarily uh, approve of those practices, but again, to each his own. If you're going to make money doing that, then you make money doing that. Frequently asked questions that we run into. This is kind of the fact section, if you will. So, um, people that you talk to that ask, are you a crazy chicken lady? And you say yes, and they say, well, we want to be crazy chicken people too. Where do we get started? What do you, what do you usually run into, first questions? Uh, some of the first questions are, what breed do I start with? Mm -hmm. um, what do you many? tell them? What do you tell them when they say what breed? Rhode Island Red. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what we did. It, yeah. That's just because that's what we did. Yeah, just pick one. It doesn't matter. Um, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The first ones you're going to kill anyway, so just pick something you really don't like. So. Um, how much space do you need to provide? Yeah, that is a big question. So the answer to that, we usually go by the, the, the basic principle of four square feet per chicken. So if you've got ten chickens, you need 40, 40 square feet. Square feet. Hey, yeah, public school education paying off there. So yeah, 40 square feet. Um, now again, that is such a loaded answer. I mean, it just can't stop there because 40 square feet of what? 40 square feet of this nice, tall, luxurious grass? Awesome. But guess what? If they never get off of there, it's going to look like this in a matter of time. Chickens are just, they're very like destructive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll talk about that. They, they really tear up a lot of stuff. So 40 square feet of grass for 10 chickens would be great. They would, they'd eat that up. Again, if you're in a a climate like us where you have a winter, so things stop growing. Around here, mid-October, things stop growing and they don't start growing again till end of March. So, uh, you know, 10 chickens on the most gorgeous looking green grass, 40 square feet, it's gonna look like the surface of the moon and uh, you know, by the time your winter's over. So usually what happens is you have a situation, an area like that that's your pen, it gets eaten down and then you just have to do, put things in place, whether it's uh, pine shavings, wood chips, those type of things, mulch that area 
to keep that, you know, keep the poop down. And you're gonna to have to do some cleaning. You have to go through and clean out that, that pasture area or uh, you know, just do whatever you can to uh, try to get um, either some grass growing back there or at least covering up all the uh, uh, chicken poop. Because um, the funny thing about chicken poop, Kelly, is what? It stinks, doesn't it? Very bad. Yes, yes, because it's really heavy in ammonia. So if you let chicken poop pile up, <clears throat> it's not gonna smell like poop as much as it'll smell like an ammonia factory. It's gonna really be strong. It's not good for your chickens. It's not good for anything. Any other questions that you usually run into? Yes, um, for egg layers, how many nesting boxes do I need to build? Yeah, how many nesting boxes? Okay, so we base that off of um, principle again of one nesting box per four chickens. Um, what you'll discover, I think it's funny, no matter what we did, no matter how many nesting boxes we had, if we had the ratio right, and or we had even more nesting boxes, every single chicken went to one nesting box, and it's like they were just were just in the other day, and they're kind of stacked on top of one another, trying to push the one out. So um, they're always going to find their favorite nesting box. Um, what else do we run into? What do you feed them? So obviously you've got chicks. Um, then you uh, you want to start with a a chick starter, and there's a big debate over medicated, non-medicated chick starter. We always go the non-medicated route simply because um, yeah we we try to have a holistic uh, approach to our chickens, so we, we just we just stay away from that. Now I haven't had a lot of loss. Uh, so I haven't had hardly any loss when it comes to that. It's not like I've had malnourished chickens or we've had disease, but I've heard of guys that do. You get the, the first range of disease you have there and it wipes out all your chickens. You're gonna think, hey, I wish I'd have gone with medicated chicken feed. So it's just something you're gonna run into. Probably the last question we get asked all the time is where do you get your chickens? And uh, so you, you to the point where you decide, I wanna have chickens, I wanna have a backyard flock or a whole bunch. Where do we start, where do you go? Well, obviously you can go to the box stores, you can go to you know, this time of year, tractor supplies, the Rural Kings, your local feed stores. They're gonna be overflowing with baby chicks and you can buy them there. The thing, uh, we, we stay away from that simply because, um, A, you're not sure where they came from. B, you're not sure how they've been treated. C, um, because they usually use the same bins and stuff over and over again each year and they maybe just give it a light scrubbing. If there was a chance that there was any disease, then you're just, it's just a breeding ground. So you can end up bringing something sick home and it die on you, you bring something sick home and you, you integrate it with your flock and you could cause an issue there. So we, we mail order. So we get, uh, we find these online hatcheries and, and we've, we've gone with a, a couple there, but there's one or two that we like the best. And we've order, order from them and we get chickens in the mail. So um, had good luck with those, a little bit of loss here and there, but uh, they've been pretty good. And the post office loves it when uh, we have chickens delivered, right? <laughs> <laughs> they love the chirping in the background. They yeah. call you first thing in the morning to come and get them. Please, come get your chickens. <laughs> Although mad. this last time, the post office lady was quite enthralled with them. She kept peeking in. Oh, yeah, <laughs> eyeballing our chickens. <clears throat> well, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, we want to kick off a uh, series on chickens and uh, covered uh, some basic stuff today. What we'd like to do is, is moving forward, topics we'll cover is um, building the perfect coop, uh, free range versus containment, um, looking at the type of feed, looking at all those different options. And what we'd like to do is encourage you, if you have an idea centered around chickens you want us to discuss or get some, um, get some input on, then please comment in the comment section below and just suggest, hey, we'd like you to talk about this or this aspect of chickens or have you considered this type of thing? And we encourage that, again, we'd like to have this two-way communication going in here. So leave a comment below and just uh, let us know what you're thinking, what you'd like to hear us talk about when it comes to chickens. And again, we can detail what we have and what we know and, and we can discuss uh, other options as well. Well, May is upon us, so that uh, means it's time for us to draw our uh, winner for the April gift. The April gift is the StormTech Multi-Tool, $40 tool there. And uh, we drew a name, <coughs> and the winner is Jim from Rhode Island. So congratulations, Jim. We'll uh, send that Multi-Tool out to you as uh, soon as possible and hope you can use it. Hope it has multi-function. Well, in the spirit of talking about chickens, our giveaway for the month of May is going to be a copy of John Siskovich's book, uh, Stress-Free Chicken Tractor Plans. And that's the book that we use to do our chicken tractor, which we're going to detail in upcoming videos. Um, but it's a really good book, uh, really is a, a, a good detailed plan on how to build a tractor. And I really like this tractor. I think it can be adapted to do a lot of things. He, he uses them for meat birds. Um, I think you could you can make this a, a, a small backyard uh, 
chicken tractor option for egg layers just with some slight modifications so uh, really neat plan really appreciate what John's done over there at uh, farm marketing solutions and put together a, a good book there so we're gonna we're gonna send you one from Amazon if you're our, our drawing winner for uh, the month of May well as always we encourage you to give us a thumbs up if you like this video and be sure to subscribe to the channel uh, be sure to sign up for our e-newsletter if you want to be entered in for our monthly drawings, you can just go to redtoolhouse.com and down at the bottom there's a, a uh, large button there that you can sign up to join. Uh, be sure to look for us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash redtoolhousefarm is where you can find us. Well, take care.